Hey gang, today I'm going to show you how to set the valves on a V-twin Briggs and Stratton. So if you have a lawnmower like this, you need to get this uh, hood off. So come over here. First thing you need to do is unplug your lights. So go ahead and take this off. Just pinch right here, pull out. Very simple. And then to take off the hood, trying to think of how I'm gonna be able to show you how to take off. Just tip it back like this, lift up and out. So you get to a point, come up and out. Very simple. Okay, we're working on a Briggs & Stratton 22 horsepower V-twin engine. I did another video on how to set the valves on a single cylinder engine. So if here's a single cylinder engine, let's go ahead and check out my other video. Yours is a V-twin or a dual cylinder. And this video will help you out. Okay, so first thing you need is, mine is a 3 8 or a 10 mm. 3 8 okay. So I'm just gonna move you over here. I might have to move you to get a better angle here in a second. But for right now, grab your 3 8 drive. And there's four bolts. You're looking for these valve covers. There's one on each side. You're looking for these valve covers, okay? Very simple, very easy. There's just a bolt here. One thing you're going to want to grab is a paper towel. Or something to catch this oil that may come out. Go ahead and put something to catch the oil when it comes out. And then there's one over here. Just one in each corner. Go ahead and take them out. You do not want to have your engine running before you do this. You do not want it hot. Okay, huh. one thing we can see here, this is very old and that tube just broke. So if yours is like mine, you're gonna have to replace that. Okay, so first thing what you're looking at when you get in here, you wanna inspect our, let me zoom you guys in. Okay, so you wanna look at your push rods right here, one here, one for exhaust, one for intake. You want to make sure these are not bent and that they are where they're supposed to be on the side of the, right here on these rocker arms. These are called rocker arms. They come off here, go in, go back. Make sure yours is not bent or off. Next thing you, that we want to do is we want to pull the spark plug. My spark plug is right here. Usually it's a 13 16th. Yep, that's what mine is today. Yours may be a little different. Scoot you over here. Spark plugs right there. You know what? That is not the right size. I apologize. I thought it grabbed, but it did not. Probably going to be a 5 8. Sometimes you just gotta try and see. It's gonna be a 5 8. Okay, make sure it's super snug on there. You can use a impact to get it out. Don't recommend using an impact to get it in. Good time to take a look at your spark plugs. This one's definitely due for some new spark plugs. Black, super nasty. Sometimes you can clean them up. So if yours is looking bad like that, you can clean it up as well. Okay, you're also gonna need a screwdriver. I like to use a Phillips head. You can use either one that you would like. And we gotta to find top dead center. So to find top dead center, we're gonna be looking at these. 
We're also going to be sticking our screwdriver in the cylinder hole where we just took out the spark plug. And then we are going to be turning the top of the engine with our hand. So go ahead and grab your, your uh, <clears throat> screwdriver. And get in a good spot where you can turn your engine. These bolts on the top of my engine are loose, so I'm just going to tighten those down. If yours is loose as well, you're going to want to tighten them down. Someone took this off before and did not tighten these down. So I'm just going to tighten them down. But it isn't a hassle for me here in a second we start turning. Okay, so you want to turn your engine like this, and you want to put your spark plug or your screwdriver in the hole of the spark plug where this, this where the spark plug goes and you're going to feel your screwdriver getting pushed out and in because you're going to be pushing some pressure on it and when the piston comes up it's going to push your screwdriver out when it goes down obviously your screwdriver will go in and we're looking for top dead center so keep turning it okay my piston just went down you're going to see these moving mine's coming up Dead center. I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Okay, top dead center is when both of these, a good indicator is when both of these are loose. So once those are kind of loose, go back in there, make sure that your piston is at the very top and just kind of play with it back and forth with your hand on the engine, back and forth. Make sure you're at the peak. When you're turning that, you'll be able to fill it with your screwdriver going up and down. Make sure you're at the peak. Make sure these are loose. Okay, so once you're at top dead center, you know the pistons at the top, these are loose, meaning those valves are both closed. Um, go ahead, and what we're gonna be looking at is right here, there's a nut and a bolt right there. The end of the bolt takes a Allen, Allen head, yeah, Allen head in the end, and then this screw mine's a 13 mm so what you're going to want to do put that allen head in there and you want to loosen you want to loosen the uh nut okay so ready tied to after lucy break that nut loose also do the same thing on the bottom pretty simple break that nut loose Okay, and the next thing you want to do is grab your feeler gauge. Make sure your feeler gauge is clean. Go ahead and wipe it off like this. Go ahead and look up the specs on your machine online. So you want to make sure you're put, you're gapping your, you're using the right feeler gauge for what your machine calls for. We're going to be working on this side of the machine. I'm going to do the top one first. What you do is you stick your feeler gauge in between this rocker arm and the back of it. Okay, you can obviously see that's very loose from where I need to be. You're gonna go like that and then you're gonna take your Allen head and you're just gonna twist it in until it gets tight. Now, if it's too tight, you see how that's bending? That is not what you want. You want it to just have a little bit of catch to it, but you can still move your feeler gauge in and out. Once you get to that point, I like to make sure that my feeler gauge can hang for a second. That usually tells me that I'm about right in the right spot. Do not twist this, keep that in there. Go ahead and take your hands and tighten up that nut. The nut is what's going to hold. So go ahead and tighten that nut. The nut is what holds your adjustment in the place that you adjusted it, okay? Go ahead and check it again. Okay. 
Next thing, let's go down to the bottom one and do the same thing. We are not done yet, so don't quit watching the video. Just when you set them does not mean that they are perfect. So go ahead and get these good. Okay, hold it like that. Tighten down that nut. Be very patient. You'll be grateful you uh, were patient when you did this. Okay. Go ahead and check them again. Okay. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn your engine with your hand again. Do not try to turn it on with your machine. Just turn this with your hand. Okay, and come back. Find top dead center again. Those are both loose. It's a good indicator that you're close. Stick your screwdriver in there. Okay, once you've turned your engine over with your hand, then we're gonna come back to these valves and do the exact same thing. First, we're gonna check them. That one's a little loose. That one's right where I want it. So I'm gonna redo this top one. Sometimes, it, sometimes you have to do it a couple times to get them right where you want it. Okay. Bottom one's right where I want it. This top one is not. It's just a little looser than I like it. So I'll just go ahead, back and forth. Okay, once you have it where you want it. Take that nut in. Tighten that good. Still is just not what I want. So you're just gonna repeat the process. Tighten that nut. Okay. Okay, I like where that is. I'm gonna turn my engine again with my hand. You can watch these going up and down. It's gonna to get tough to turn as you get your compression strokes. On your other side, because you don't have this part pulled out on that side. Eh, boom, and okay. they're both loose. You know you're close to top dead center. Okay, check them one more time with your feeder gauge. Okay, when they're where you want them, you are all done. Next thing you gotta do is just put this back on. Definitely wanna make sure you clean this cover up. Clean up this face before you put this back on. If you want a good seal, you don't want this to be leaking. If yours has glue on it instead of a gasket, you're gonna have to go buy a new sealer so that you can make your gasket again or buy these gaskets. Uh, you're gonna have to scrape off the glue off of here. Um, but make sure that you tighten this nut very good, and this very good, because that's what's gonna be holding your, measure, your uh, adjustment where it needs to be. Okay, go ahead and put this back on. Put these bolts back in. started by hand do not want to strip these out okay and you're putting them back in if you're doing it with an impact wrench just take them in and then finish it off with your hand or just a hand 
the socket. Like I'll show you here. Just take it in. You're not tightening it with the impact. In. In. You can look up the torque specs online. And then finish it up with your hand. Did not want to strip those out. Okay. That's how you do the valves on a twin cylinder engine. Obviously, we just did one side. So once you're done with this side, you're going to move to the other side and do the exact same thing. If you need new spark plugs, go buy new spark plugs. And then go ahead and install them back in. And with spark plugs, you do not want to run it in with an impact. Get it started with your hand. Finish it up the rest of the way like this. Once it gets tight, there's a washer on the front of that spark plug. You are just making sure that you get it snug like that and then stop. You do not want to strip that out. Hook your wire back up and you are done. Like I said, once you're done with this side, you move to the other side of the twin cylinder and do the exact same thing. As you can see, it's got the overhead valves right on both sides. So you move to this side, do the exact same thing, and then put your hood back on, hook up your lights, check the oil, see the level of the oil, make sure it's correct. If you have any repairs like this tube, like I have, go ahead and fix that before you start it again. Check the oil, because um, some oil did drain out, make sure the oil's still at a good spot and then go ahead and start it. And I hope it runs awesome for you. If you set the valves correctly and there's no other problems with the machines, it should purr and run great. Hope this video was helpful. It's really not that scary of a job. A lot of people think of setting valves and they get nervous, at least I used to. But it, once I've learned, it really is not that bad. It's really easy. I hope this video was able to help you guys out. Just go slow, be patient. If you have to do it a couple times, do it um, a couple times to make sure you get it at that right clearance, whatever your engine is calling for. Awesome. You guys go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll be coming out with more videos. You guys have a great day.